begin today's program with one of the newest members of Congress, part of that freshman class up on Capitol Hill today, Congressman James Lankford, Republican of Oklahoma. Uh, welcome to office, sir. And I want to ask you, first of all, how, how has the first month been? Has it been about what you expected? Has it been busier, less busy than you thought? We're hoping to get more done in these first four or five weeks. It, it is about what I expected, getting a chance to just connect with the committee assignments and getting a chance to learn your way around and connect with people. One of the primary things about dealing with a legislative group, you have 435 members. Uh, you've got to just develop their relationships and know who can help you get things done and where, where can you go to get things done. Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm drawn to your bio. Of course, before you got this job, you were a camp counselor for a very big right. organization. You had 50,000 students. So right. can you sort of compare Congress to camp? I, I've got to tell you, I've had oh. more than one person say, if you can handle 51,000 teenagers, you can handle Congress. Because uh, we have all the irresponsibility that you have with a group of teenagers. Yeah, I was I was the director of that camp for the last 15 years, and it was my joy to do that, and obviously resign that to come here to Congress. All right, now, Congressman, what what do you make of the efforts that are now underfoot to, to to cut the budget? We've heard some varying numbers here from members of Congress. Paul Ryan put his plan out. Do, do they go far enough, in your opinion? Do they do you feel like it, Republicans right now are going as far as you need to go in terms of cutting the budget? No, I don't think we're going as far as we need to know uh, need to go. But I also don't think this is the final statement on it. Uh, uh, Speaker Boehner has said multiple times that this is the beginning point, and we're going to have an open process, which has been unusual in the last two years. There's not been any open process on dealing with bills, and so now it's a matter of open up the process. Everybody bring in their spending cuts. I, I don't know if you're familiar with the children's book Stone Soup. Uh, where the story is told of a person trying to make soup with the whole community. They start with a rock and say, I just need a little more, need a little more, and everybody kind of shares and jumps in on it. Well, that's kind of what this budget process has become. Uh, it's stone soup. Everybody bring your cuts to the table, and let's see if we can get to the numbers that we've got to get to. All right, well, one thing that hasn't been discussed either by the president or e even many Republicans is entitlements. I mean, we all know that that's a really right. big piece of, of the pie here. What do you think should be done, or the stone soup, as it, is, as it were? Um, tell me, do you think it, th that the entitlement program should be on the table here, and are you going to call for more uh, a focus on entitlement reform? Well, there's really three issues we're dealing with right now, and that's the difficult thing to be able to track. The first one we're out of the out of the bat on is this year's budget. Uh, so much has been made of trying to make cuts, but we're dealing with the current year that we're in right now. You're not going to make entitlement changes right. to the current year that we're in, and so that's the first launch of proposals that are happening here. Then you've got to deal with the debt ceiling, and you have to deal with 2012. Those should be beginning points for entitlement reform, and I do think we can get there. Uh, the issue is the president and uh, the other party being able to come to the table and saying we all know this is an issue. Let's start working on solutions rather than just beat each other up. Uh, because in the past, every time someone brings up retirement reform, the other party beats them up and it goes away. We've got to deal with this. And Congressman, I understand that you're you're joining up with the uh, the senator from your home state, Tom Coburn, to, to introduce a measure that would uh, deny unemployment insurance to millionaires. I guess means testing of unemployment insurance. Is, is that right? And how much of an issue is this? It, it's the beginning point of it. This is part of that stone soup. It's not a large bill. It's just one more piece, and we're doing a lot of these. We're looking at individual pieces saying, where can we save money? Uh, right now, if you made a, a million dollars in the previous year on your income tax, you can still file for uh, unemployment in insurance for this year, or unemployment benefits for this year. It's not very much, about $6,000, but you're talking about about 2,800 people did that in 2008. So that's about $20 million in our budget. Uh, if you start extrapolating that out and saying, okay, if someone who made a million dollars last year, uh, do they really need to get $6,000 worth of unemployment this year on it? Uh, we probably need to be better stewards of our dollars on that. And so we're looking at every small area we can, start with the small, work our way to the biggest areas, and start cutting back. So that, that is a piece I'm introducing today with Senator Coburn. One other I issue that's on the table this week is the Patriot Act and the extension. For, first of all, you, do you feel comfortable supporting the temporary extension of the Patriot Act? I do initially look at the temporary version of that. Actually, that's a lot of research I blocked off this afternoon to try to finish up before we get to the vote, actually, uh, on that extension for this evening. So I'll tell you more tonight. How about that? Uh, that sounds very, right. very good. We know what to expect a little bit more. Congressman James Langford, Republican of Oklahoma, yeah, just five weeks into office. Fresh face still. We love it. Thanks for being here. Really Thank appreciate you. it. You bet. Thank you.